Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to Lara Tips. So in this video, we'll be talking about HTTP sessions. So there are a lot of drivers uh, we can use uh, you know, for the sessions in Laravel. We can use file, database, Redis, Memchat, uh, everything. But by default, Laravel uses file as a session driver. So we'll be looking into that. So what we can do is we can store data uh, uh, on a session we can retrieve it delete it all those things we can do so let's see how to do that so when i go in the web.php file there is there are three routes home about us and contact us and if you go and look out look at over here we have three these urls home about us and contact us okay well, now what we will be doing is we will be making this navbar active according to the url suppose when it is in the home page then it will be active and when we go on the about us page it will show this about us as active so for that let's uh, we need to also add some css so let's pull tailwind css mm -hmm. let's go to the tailwind website and go to the installation and at the bottom we'll find here the cdn link so for the tutorial purpose we can add the cdn link so let me go to the home controller welcome blade and at the top above the head let's add a closing head tag or let's add the tailwind css so there are three blade files so let us add this in all of those and let us style the uh, home page and then we'll be uh, refactoring it and including the same file in all those views okay so let us go to the home page and here are the three uh, yeah let us go to the home page and let us design this uh, for those who don't know what tailwind is, tailwind css is tailwind is a utility framework for css so uh, um, let me show you some class we'll have we uh, this it has a lot of classes that we can use uh, to make our uh, design okay so let's say let's see, we have so this class means it is a display flex okay align item center it means align item center so for almost every property in the css it has a class we can use it uh, in our html so this is not a tutorial for tailwind css so i'll not go in deep into it uh, i'll just be adding some css okay now we have three pages now we, when we click on about us it will take us to the old design page so let us fix that and let us in, include the same thing in every pages for that what we can do is extract this into a partial okay so let me copy this and let me create one partial there so what I did currently is I made a parcels folder and inside that I have made a navbar.blade.php and I pasted this code, this code and added it over here. Now how to include this piece of information in here? So what we can, there is a very uh, um, useful directive in blade. I'll be also talking about the full in detail about the blade in my future lesson. So if you want to know more about that, then please subscribe. So for now we'll be only learning about the include directive but by using include directive we can include sub views like this is called a sub view okay partial view let's say so this into so so what what should we do is we should start from the view so this is the beginning point so what what is the folder structure after that we should follow that no so for now what it is it is a it has a partials and we can separate a folder by using a dot sign and you can see here navbar as, as you can see it is auto completing for me so you can see i have included a navbar which is inside a parcels folder so we have separated this by dot so we don't need to write this dot blade dot php it will be automatically included by this directory okay now when we refresh then you know there is no change it means it is working okay so what we can do is now only copy this directive and paste it in our about us about us page 
and in contact us page so we have done this so let us also add container class here this can also be made um, uh, we can also extract this but uh, we, i'll be showing you in the future blade lesson let me for now just copy the and paste it over here so when i refresh when i click on home page it's working fine when i click on about us and when i click on contact us page it is showing the respective page with the same nav bar being included in all the pages so currently we don't know which page uh, because we cannot see which one is active uh, by the user's point of view uh, so let us make these uh, let us highlight on which page using sessions okay so let us go to home controller now we'll see how to add data in a session so to add some data in the session what we can do is we have a session facade illuminate support facade this second one and as you can see it is included at the top here so what we can do is session put and let's say um, active nav active nav and let's say it has a home because we are in the home controller so we are adding na active nav as home and let us do this for all so what we are doing is currently adding home to the active nav session variable okay so we will be going to the contact us controller and adding as let us import this on the top and let us name is as contact name is at as contact and also in the about us controller let us name it as about us so what happens is whenever we visit home page it will add home to the active nav variable and when we visit contact us page it will add contact to the active nav session variable and similarly for this about us section okay so now let me go and refresh so there is nothing because we haven't done anything in the view part so let us go to the home controller and welcome view so what we have done is currently included this nav bar from partial so let's go into it and now let us add a class let us give it a class if it has a um, session variable so so now here we'll be learning how to get the variable stored in the session okay so for that what we can do is for now let me just show you over here mm, okay to get a session variable what we can do is there is a session helper method in the laravel and we we need to give the key and what is the key we can see it here the active nav is the key okay so if we put it here then if we go on the home page we'll see here home and if we give, go on the about us page we'll see here about and if we go on a contact us page we'll see here contact so let's see now if we go on home page you can see we we'll see here home if we go on about us page you can see here about and contact for the contact us page so i have just shown you here what is how to get the output now how to use it to make those nav bar active so to make the nav bar active what we can give is just for an example bg purple let's say um, 800 and you can see we will be adding this color when something is active okay so currently we are in the contact contact space but the home page is active which is not correct so we'll be fixing this so we will only be adding this class if a session variable is home in this case since we are in the home route okay so let's say if session what was the our key name active nav okay so let's copy it if session active nav bar is equal to home then we'll be adding purple sorry purple dash bg dash 800 class else we'll be adding nothing okay normal means nothing so similarly let us copy this code and let us add it everywhere but 
what should we do here is since it is about us for about us space so let us add about and this is for contact us space so uh, these are the values that we have added in the controller section so let's for example let us go to the about us controller and you can see here this is the about and this value should be here and similar this is on the contact us controller so you can see here it is on here so we have to add, compare it if the session value is contact then this background will be added so when you go to the home page so it's not highlighting sorry the class name was wrong so it must be like this so now when i refresh the page the home page will get highlighted so when i visit the about us page about us will be highlighted and contact us page will be highlighted when we visit this this is all happening because the same variable is being overridden on the different controllers so if you can see here the active nav same keys home when we visit the home controller and just i'm repeating, repeating this so that you would be more clear so when when we go on the about us page now the same variable will be overridden with the about and similarly on the contact us controller same variable is contact so it will the contact us will get highlighted over here so what we, we have currently looked into is the session variable which will be mm -hmm, for certain lifetime so how can we see how long will this session variable live so we can see here in config sorry let's let me minimize all this so you can see here inside config we can go ahead and see on the session and here are all the configuration that we can change so by default as i said the laravel uses file uh, session uh, file use files to use the session data and you can see here session lifetime is 120 seconds so for whenever you store something in a session it will be available for 120 seconds but whenever you refresh a page then uh, it will the timer will again reset and it will again be 120 seconds okay so similarly similarly there are so many other uh, configuration like you can increase enable encryption so you can see here also http only is set true so whenever you create a cookie you, using laravel by default http only will always be true so that it will so whenever http only is true then it will not this data will not be able to the cookies data will not be able to sorry the javascript will not be able to access the cookie data so it will be uh, very helpful to store the uh, json web tokens when creating apis so i'll be also making some tutorials about using some apis so stay tuned for that and also don't forget to subscribe so we have seen here how to put a data in a session and how to get a data from a session now we'll be seeing how to delete a data from a session so if we go to home controller and we have added a data here now let us remove immediately so uh, what we have here is a remove method and what we can do is let us remove the key you would not you would not do this in a real life but just for the demonstration purpose after immediately creating a session variable let us remove it and let's see if the home on the home page the home nav bar gets highlighted or not okay so when i go to click on the home page as you can see here it is not highlighted because the session variable the session the session key uh, nav item is immediately removed after it is added to this session so what we can so like this you can also remove a variable or value of a key from a session so you can also remove multiple values from a session what you, you need to do is you need to add it in a array syntax so if we had multiple keys then we can remove it like, uh, like let's say like so if if there is another key then we can also remove it like this and it will
so we can also remove uh, using the delete delete method in the session facade so let us see that So like this, we can remove the data from the system. Eh? Also, what we can do is we can like flash the session data for only one session. So uh, currently this put will add, uh, as I said, it will add a session um, to uh, almost about one uh, to about 120 minutes sorry that was not second it was minute uh, it's uh, it will add for 120 minutes but what if you only want to uh, uh, want to set a session variable in only one request for example what we can do is uh, there would be a contact us form let's say and if uh, if a user submits the contact us form and we will we'll be saying like thank you for submitting your um, request or question like thank you for submitting like those messages where we can success message let's say all out message we can show uh, so those can go into the flash section of the session okay so for that what we can there is a flash method sorry uh, not in this helper but So for that we have a flash method. So if we flash something, let's say message, and let's say uh, submitted, let this message, and let us show this message inside the home blade. Sorry, welcome blade. Can retype it as same as before all out messages then this mess this will only be visible for the one request and on every other request it will not be available so if i go to the home page and you can see here successfully submitted this message appeared now when i go to the about us page and sorry when i go to the about us page So to demonstrate this, let us create a form, okay? So for that, we need to go to the web.php file, which is under the routes and web.php. Um, let us create a post request. Or what we can do is we can just create a simple form over here so let us just create a re redirect route uh, we'll be learning about the form submission also in other in other future lessons so let us not include here and not make you confusion not confuse you okay so what we can do is in the contact us page let us create a simple form and what we will be doing is let us give it a name and sorry what contact submit let us give it a name as contact submit and in the action let us give it a route with contact submit and 
let for now let's just create a button and give, let us give it a class px dash 8 py dash 4 rounded and let's say txt nest dominance white and bg dash purple dash 700 and let us go to the contact of space <laughs> it's a huge button <laughs> so for now let us add it inside a div and let us add it here and let us see py2 py4 and the submit button as you can see this is a submit button okay whenever we click on the submit button it will take us to this what submit contact submit page you can see here on the web.php it is here so we can see here let's say dd and one let's say one so what it is telling dump and die so it will not go after it will stop the execution here and show us the output so let us click on the submit and you can see here the one is being outputted so it means we are reaching here okay so for now what we have in the home let us remove this okay now when you are in the home we are not seeing any flash message okay so when we go on the contact us controller and when we submit we'll be here so we'll be doing what we can also use the helper method like this flash let's say alert message so what we can do is we can set this message session flash and what we can do is redirect let us redirect to home okay so what we are doing is whenever a user submits sorry submits this form this form so here also we can have like so let's input type text okay let's say for example name so it is not current the input is here but it is not designed properly so we can add all those fields if you want so for now let us remove this okay we'll only have the submit button and it is when it is submitted it will reach here and it will flash this data contact us form submitted successfully to the alert message key and it will redirect to the home page okay for now and this data will only be available for the one page reload okay sorry only for the one request so what we can do is here we can so since we are redirecting to the home page so if we go on the home page sorry where we have let us go from here on welcome.blade.php and we can see here we have shown the alert message over here and the same keys over here okay so when we submit let's say and it will redirect and it should show us that message sorry we forgot sorry we forgot to return from here so that's why it's showing us a blank page so so let us go back on the contact us page and let us submit once again and you can see here we have we are seeing this contact us form submitted successfully which is this message and if i again click on the home page then this message should disappear it should not be visible so you can see here it is not visible so when i come go to the about us page and uh, when i come to the home page again the message is not visible but it is only visible when we submit this form so this is very useful for showing all our messages so that's it for this video guys uh, it's all about all about session is being covered so if you want to know learn more about other features of laravel then you can subscribe my channel and in the future videos i'll be also making some projects uh, uh, like uh, e-commerce project i'll also be making an e-commerce project like a blog as well first of all i'll be making a blog and then i'll be making e-commerce project 
which will be very useful for you guys uh, you know those who are just starting and using laravel it will be very helpful for you uh, when creating and you can use that it's very it's free to use i'll uh, not be making any copyright or anything so you can freely use and modify that code i'll be publishing those also in the github and you can um, use that code and develop or add some other features to that blog or e-commerce and um, add it to your portfolio as well so that's it for this video guys thank you for watching have a nice day bye